Welcome to the Legendary Upside Podcast. My name is Pat Corain. I'm joined in the flesh by Eric Froth. Here we are. <laughs> Pacific Beach, San Diego, right? I, I got my softball gear on just for San Diego. You know, my new since September resident. Yeah, that's so right. excited. First time I've seen you since I you know, moved here. I know. Football's over. We can actually uh, socialize again. It's yeah. Nice. <laughs> it's nice. This is when the, the pro and the college sides cross pollinate. That's true. Is a we uh there's a, a hard line where we're not allowed to talk until March. Yes. But yes. once it's March, post combine, we're allowed to co-mingle. I become friends with the pro <laughs> fantasy guys again. <laughs> I learn about uh, which divisions, which conferences the college teams are in now. Yes. And then yes. I'll forget as soon as I start thinking about the NFL. And, and you can remind me next spring. Um, let's, uh, yeah, we're going to dive into the rookie class. We got about an hour here to dive in. And I just want to get Froton's thoughts proton is a true college football expert uh fantasy or uh, college football writer of the year college uh college sports writer college of the year by the fswa year. uh second time 2020 and 2023 was just named thank you yeah this guy is deep in the weeds on the college football stuff in a way that i think um can be huge for my audience that's more like playing catch up this time of year so and we are also in the weeds at Legendary Upside with the best ball drafts. Really, you know, I mean, people are like halfway done with a portfolio of, of baseball team. Yeah, it's crazy. So I love, I love the passion. Yeah. So we and the rookies, I think, are a key way to get an edge in these tournaments. Absolutely, because you don't have any draft capital assigned. You don't have. We don't know where they're going to go. And if you can project that, my God, can you get Puka level excitement? Let's find them. Um, all right. Well, let's start quarterback because. I am starting to feel like I'm taking crazy pills with Drake May uh, in that he seems like he's falling like every day. He like falls that. a little more. Yeah, and his profile from a fantasy perspective is like it's it just looks awesome. I mean, even like the failures look like like I'm like, if he's Carson Wentz, like I'm good with that. You know, from again, I'm thinking more best ball. Yeah. If he's Blake Bortles. Like I'll live with that. You know, but I think there's some Herbert type outcomes as well. Like I'm excited about him, but the NFL is starting to get a little bit nervous. It's not strange to me that they view Caleb Williams as locked in. It's strange to me that other significant red flag, flag prospects are moving up potentially ahead of him. Now, J.J. McCarthy, it's like, is he in the conversation for May? I mean, this dude didn't like attempt passes in college. So that seems like a red flag. Jaden Daniels didn't break out until his fifth season. He's a very lean rushing guy. What What's your view on that group after Caleb Williams? So I think, you know, he's locked in. I feel good about him one. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a ton of sense. But but after that, it gets it, it's the, the shans. The sands are shifting a bit. Yeah. yeah, And that's fair. When it comes to to May, as you sort of articulated the frame, the athleticism, uh, the hereditary background, even his dad, UNC star basketball player. Four, I mean, he's one of four brothers, all college athletes. One of his brothers played at UNC. I mean, he has a yeah. basketball background, yeah. which, as you know, I have a basketball background, AAU, collegiate level, as well as baseball. I firmly believe that basketball players are the best athletes in the world for their size. And you see that with wide receivers. And I think that's, that's applicable to Drake May, too, because you forget, especially if we're talking fantasy. The man can run. He can run. Yeah. Hell, yes. And he's big enough to take a, take a hit and be able to – you know, attack the edges of a tackler and and put his shoulder down and, and get a little couple extra yards. Yeah. When Jaden Daniels tries to do that, he gets spine busted on the turf. And like it's some spectacular, <laughs> painful tackles that you look like he took this yeah. year. <clears throat> and I was lucky enough this summer to which you should come with me this year, Redondo Beach. Uh, they host the Elite Eleven final every year, which has the best high school quarterbacks that are going from oh, cool. From their senior year in high school to college. Yeah. Well, what they do is they have counselors there, right? So this year, the counselors, uh, Caleb showed up for about two hours in sweatpants and a, and a tattered shirt, looked homeless, and he was dropping dimes all over the place. <laughs> didn't care. He was just awesome. skip, literally skipping around. He didn't care. He was just dropping dimes like casually. It was pretty impressive. But <laughs> the other two QBs that were the, uh, the counselors... I got to see throw every day doing the pro day drills, all of it, Penix and Daniels. Hmm. And I was surprised to see Daniels there because like you talked about, he had four years yeah, yeah. where he was fairly 
uninspiring. Yeah. You know, definitely his three years at Arizona State. There's there's a mixed bag there. Yeah. And to his maybe to his credit, weird coaching situation going on there with uh, Herm Edwards. You know the, the CEO model kind of worked, kind of didn't. Antonio Pierce he got in some heat uh, as the DC there before he went to the Raiders because he was hosting people on campus during the COVID stuff. They okay. got in some heat for that. But he goes over to LSU, and like you saw this year, I mean, he's dropping deep balls. Yes, yeah, yeah. No, the this year was deep nice. passing was yeah. really good. Yeah. What concerns me with Daniels, and I, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you this refrain. Uh, I need to see it. I need to see him remedy this before I feel really comfortable with him on a long term dynasty perspective. It's when he's flushed. Right. So he's there in the pocket and he's he's dropping the deep balls and he looks great. He's got a nice clean over the, you know, over the top delivery. I mean, his deep ball acumen is there. It's when he's flushed, when he's pressured or even when he's not pressured. If you'll see him sometimes in the pocket where he'll stand back and it'll be the one, two, three. And there won't be pressure. And he runs. But his, t- his clock goes yeah. off. Yeah. When he's flushed, rolling right, left, doesn't matter. 20% of the time that he was flushed, moved off his spot, he threw a pass. The other 80% of the time he ran. Yeah. And he had 90 explosive plays, which is the most of any SEC quarterback ever. Right. Like significantly, even more than Joe Burrow, which that's the greatest SEC season I've ever seen a quarterback have in my life. It's him and Camp. But with Daniels, the average NFL quarterback when flushed, when on the move, throws the ball 57% of the time. He threw it 20%. Nine of 19 Yeah, he completed. I mean, he threw only threw 19 passes in 13 games? That is an anomaly that will have to be corrected because otherwise I see an RG3 type future. He's thin. He puts himself in a danger when he runs. He wants to run. He doesn't want to keep his eyes on field. He wants to run. You're not going to have those lanes in the NFL. That's my concern with him. So I think that's where we're at with, with the two of them. Yeah. And so the funny thing is with Daniels, like I share all of the worries, but he's, we're also way ahead of the market in best ball on him because an RG3 type of future sounds pretty cool for right, for year for right one. now. Yeah. Heck yes. That yeah. sounds good. But yeah. I am worried about his frame. The RG3, I believe came in at like 223. That and sounds right. Daniels, didn't weigh in. Actually, did he come in at 223? I think he did. RG? I thought he was a little lighter, but I, I could be wrong. Yeah, it's off know. the top of my head. But yeah, he basically. but he wasn't 210, which Daniels was listed at and then didn't yeah. weigh in. Yep. So that's that's a little bit of a concern for me, just in terms of translating it. And then I, the other thing is that he had the highest kept clean scramble rate of any quarterback that I've seen. So if anyone that, that's yes. in my database has got the highest – it's just ahead of Jalen Hurts. It's not like a, you know, I think it was Hurts, Jacoby Brissett um, were the next two guys after that. Yep. Not the end of the world to be, in fact, I normally like a guy who, yeah. who scrambles a lot when he's kept clean from a fantasy perspective because I want those rushing points. Three points and you don't get any uh, yards taken away for sacks, which is something that happens in college. So right. that's right. huge. Yeah. But <clears throat> so those kept clean scrambles happen on dropbacks. And if you're constantly scrambling on your clean and pressure dropbacks, you might get less dropbacks in yeah. the NFL. And so yeah. it's, I'm, I'm like nervous about him being in a conservative offense where they're really trying to limit how many dropbacks he has. And that I think could immediately hurt his fancy potential. So that's like where I'm like may on the other hand, he's offering us rushing potential more as like a, really plus scrambler he's not a true dual threat like mm-hmm. daniels but I agree. he's got that that big frame big arm i mean his deep passing was really impressive yep um he can throw over the middle of the field mm-hmm. and you can put passing attempts on this guy you know he can be that herbert oh, yeah. who you just load up with passing attempts early in his career and that's the path i i see to him being like a fantasy star early in his career but does he fall? Does he fall to five? Does he fall to eight? What if he fell to the Raiders at 13? Like, does that start to make you nervous about him if he were to? Because because honestly, like, I'm so excited about his profile that he would have to, I think he'd have to fall past the Raiders. And at that point, I'd be like, I'm missing something. But if he didn't, if he felt, you know, if he was once the Broncos, I'd be excited. But 
I think the the reaction generally from the community would be like, how did this guy fall to, you know, outside the top 10? When I think about that, right, I just try to look at the history of quarterbacks. Is it always the first quarterback taken that's the ace? We only have to go back one year right, to figure out that that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. And you could talk about Carolina's ownership and you know, the <laughs> folly that that is. But, you know, in, in the here and now, um, you know, Josh Allen wasn't the first quarterback taken. Yeah. Right. Um, neither was neither was Mahomes. Neither neither was Mahomes. Yeah. Like you know, uh, obviously the shine's coming off Watson, but he was uh, yeah. Watson was twelve, overall, I think, or he was twelve. With, and and Mahomes was Mahomes 10, was ten. And he yeah. went twelve. You're right. And yeah. you know, and Watson. So like it, this hasn't. And Lamar Jackson, obviously. Yeah. Jalen Hurts. But I mean, that, that would make all. me nervous. If he goes thirty-two, I'm gonna. Oh yeah, thirty-two. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Good point. <laughs> no, I, there's too many desperate teams here right. at the top. Right. We talked about. We're right. We're right. Raiders, Broncos, Falcons, yeah, uh, Vikings, yeah, right there, just right out of the gate, yeah, you know, and there's more. It's just those are the ones that are just right there, and and, and that know. would tell you a Giants lot. Giants possibly too. Giants, I mean, that, well, that's the landmine I think from best ball is if he goes to the Giants mm -hmm. because I mean that potentially he sits the entire year. Yes, um, and then it, you're it's nightmare. Yeah, too. yeah, and so that, I think if if we're trying to be prudent with the, with May, that's the thing to be mindful of is that. He's now in range to go to the Giants in a way that Daniels feels like maybe. Do you think Daniels goes ahead of May at this point? I mean, that's the NFL. It seems to be the budding yeah. consensus. Yeah. Personally, uh, I hope he does because, you know, I'm from Boston. I'm a Patriots fan, and I want Drake May in a Patriots uniform. And I don't think he gets past three. So, okay. I mean, we could talk okay. about the Giants. I don't think it's happening. Okay. But that being said, if that somewhat, you know, chalk goes – I mean, Daniels, Washington, May, New England. How attractive is that New England situation? Do they, I mean, if they sign Calvin Ridley. Yeah. If they yeah. go and then okay. their next pick, if they go, they're going to have some good wide receivers available with that high second round pick. That, that, yeah, that's very true. It's math. There's yeah. going to be like, I think there's five or six. I think it's five and a half. It's probably the over under for yeah. wide receivers in the first round. Yeah. There's going to be some studs. All right. So you can go and do the band aid because they got a million dollars with Ridley, but then go at a, you know, a young, maybe Ad and I, maybe you want to go key on. I don't let's, think they'll let's, go. Let's talk the class. Let's talk that yeah. group because I think you're looking at the top. I mean, you, I don't think you have any any major hot takes here on the top three guys. Like the, the best ball. Oh, I'm in. Yeah. yeah the, the best ball market is, um, is Harrison's going in the middle of the second round. Of best ball yep. drafts right now. Yep, for the yeah. Oh, whoa, whoa. Seasonal best ball drafts? Yeah. He's the 18th overall pick. Oh my god. I thought that was Dynasty. No. He was going for no, that. No, no. That's what I've been looking because I only pay attention to Dynasty like you guys do. Wow. Yeah. Well, when we need we need Arizona then. We, we need, need Arizona, Arizona to take them. Yeah, we need Arizona. Because then it's on. Yeah. Then it's AJ yeah. Green time. Yeah. 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 It's on. I think if he goes to Arizona, his his price actually rises a little bit. If he goes to the Patriots, he probably falls to like the early third oh, round. That wouldn't be good. Yeah, but I think people still take it. I don't think I don't think the Patriots, and like I said, I'm a New England guy. I don't think they can do it. I don't think yeah. they're gonna do it. I yeah. think they're gonna take a QB because we're trade they, down. I mean, they could they could get a huge hold by trading <sighs> down. There's so many needs. I don't think they'll do it. Yeah. I, I just my gut tells me that. Okay. Which is a dangerous proposition for fantasy, you know, because I think they're not looking at a one year rebuild. At least I no, hope they're not. No. That wouldn't be the smartest thing to do. So I'd be that's the one thing that concerns me about, you know, the QBs. Uh -huh. Which one gets which stuck one gets in New stuck England? There. Yeah, yeah. And then at the same time with the wide receivers, how does that shake out too? Because they're not. I don't see him taking Troy Franklin. What do you need another Tyquan Thornton for? Oh, no. They're they're the same guy. No, you don't need that. He can run routes. I he's one seventy six and six two. Did you see his? Did you see his gauntlet? Oh, he was running the gauntlet. All right, he was weaving through the gauntlet. It's not the snake drill. So yeah, like oh, you know, no. I'm not. I'm out on Troy. Frank. You're completely out. I was out on him before. No, he needed. All right. So the the Oregon offense is. Bo Nix had 2.22 seconds to throw. That was his average. He's literally catching the ball and gun. Pit like okay, he's catching it. Linebacker goes down. Hook zone. Tez Johnson. He's just quick, quick, bang, bang, bang. And Tez Johnson is doing all the dirty work. He's Bo Nix's stepbrother. He's like adopted stepbrother. Okay. He will be a pro next year, but 
he's an, a dynamic slot receiver. Did all the underneath, did all the dirty work. He, he's snapping off all the routes. He's doing all the full range stuff. And Troy Franklin is doing the Jalen Hyatt. Run down the sidelines. We're going to give you it. We're going to give a little up. Oh, there's a play fake. Run down the sideline in one-on-one -on -one coverage and be faster than that guy. On the outside, Basics. at least. I mean, that Hyatt was from the slot. Can we give Can we give Franklin One hundred percent. But they're that's they're the speed guys who okay. just run down the field, and that's why yeah. I, I use that comp. Obviously, Tyquan Th Thornton is the comp for Troy Franklin. But I'm just giving you the last year. Yeah, sure. The Jalen Hyatt fast guy run. Right well, we field. were pretty high on Franklin coming into the combine, but I was hoping he would be a little faster and a little bigger, a little heavier. Yeah. Yeah. So we're actually behind the market now. Um, that that's been a disappointing one. Oh boy. I, I, uh oh. I'm yeah. Sorry. You should have told me that no, before no, I no, talked no, about no, this. No, on, that's okay. On that's okay. We want the we want the unvarnished truth here, you know. <laughs> but but I can understand the appeal yeah. of Franklin, especially before you get in the combine, because you're assuming 185, 190. Yeah. You know, at 60, 190. All right, he's still a little thin, but. 176. Why? Ooh. And then you run. The and then the 441. Yeah. You'd love to see like what Brian Thomas did. Yeah. Because he was the 12th, I want to say. Yeah. 12th in yeah. terms of speed. And you're 176 at 62. And you're winning with that speed. He's going to get bumped. Like, good luck getting off the gyms. So you're not. Yeah. Because I've heard pretty positive stuff about his route running, but it seems like you're not into his. It's route not running. that he wasn't asked to do. A lot of different things. Okay. This isn't a very complicated offense they're running at mm -hmm. Oregon. You know, it's just like one read and you and you you're doing it. He's not, I don't see the plan with him. Okay. Like I see with some of the better guys. Well, who so this. who are the better guys? Who are the guys? Absolutely Lad, Lad McConkey, without a doubt. You want to watch his routes. It's he's as easy as it gets when it comes to watching and his, his how he was able to manipulate defenders. He's always, even when it's subtle stuff, if you watch the way he's running his routes, there's different phases to it. And he's setting his guys up the whole time. And you can see what he's doing. You see there's a plan. He knows where he wants to go. And then when he does it, huge, it's direct angles. And you see the guys recovering him so round to try to make up the ground. You can't. So in terms of craftiness, I mean, Lad's very, very crafty. Pretty athletic, too. So yes, he, we, he we were behind four, three, on him, and then now we're ahead, um, pretty substantially ahead now because yes. of the athleticism in it. I mean, he could sneak into the first round, potentially. Certainly. Yeah, yeah. and we've seen him locked to that, like, right around the Chiefs area, yeah. which is interesting. I'm, I'm dying to know, what, what do they want to do? Because that's, if, especially well, if we're talking best ball. Xavier Worthy who's gets, it going to be? Penciled in there a fair amount. Are you? Would you be into that? I mean, you'd be into that on the Chiefs. I like talking into... about Worthy. I, yeah. I, I like. I think he's a really good example of a guy who maybe is getting. He's not quite what he's been projected to be, right? And what I mean by that is, in twenty two. All right, so let, let's life cycle it. Twenty twenty one, first season for Xavier Worthy. He's under the Tom Herman regime, right? Who got fired after 2021? And in comes Steve Sarkeesian. This so, is a big season for the analytical evaluation because he broke out as a true freshman. Mega breakout in a way that few guys really do, especially at his size at 165. Like yeah. he went out and he trashed who knows, the big. Who knows 12. how big he was then? Yeah, who knows? Right. <laughs> Could probably. be tagged out 155. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Who knows? But I mean, he is like legit like six foot. So that's the yeah. thing. He's yeah, not yeah. short. Yeah. You don't look at him and you're like, oh, there's a little guy. No, he's he's not. He's good, solid six foot. With with Worthy, so he has the big freshman breakout. And then year two in comes Sarkeesian. He sees him and he's like, oh, my gosh, what do I have here? Look what I have. Like this dynamic weapon, right? So what does he do? He runs them deep mm -hmm. the whole time. 40% of his routes, of his targets, were 20-plus yards downfield in 2022. That is a boatload. Yeah, that's, that's totally as, cool. as much as you're going to get. Yeah. For perspective, he got 44 targets that year. Um, in 22, the leader last year was Rome McDunsey with 43 in terms of deep targets. Wow. So he had more than Rome, and Rome got more targets because they were hucking it all over the place. Right. And in 2022, they had Bijan and Rashawn Johnson. Right, right it's a right. different world we're living in yeah. with those two offenses. Yeah. So what happens is he he catches 21 percent of those balls that he gets thrown downfield. He goes nine for 44, and he's just like, all right, <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Okay. What are we going to do here? This is this is a point of diminishing returns. And yeah. it should be said that there's a couple of clips you can go and find everybody out there of Xavier Worthy streaking buck naked down the field. And Quinn Ewers overthrowing him or underthrowing him. So I do want to be fair in terms of the target distributor. He, he got missed a couple of times. <laughs> But listen, that's not what the point is. 2023 comes around. Survive is an evocative image there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to give you the goods and the bats, I guess. I don't want I don't want to just give you the rose colored glasses. Yeah. I want to give it all, you know? But here's here's what made me kind of come around a little bit more on worthy. Last year, Sarkeesian is like, all right, we gotta figure this isn't uh, we, his A dot dropped a lot. 17.6 to 9.9. Wow. Night and day. Yeah. And the reason why is he started getting the manufactured touches. Uh -huh. He started getting the wide receiver screens. He started getting the quick slants. You know, they're drawing things up, scheming to get him the ball in space in a way that they just didn't do last in 22. And you saw, and you will see some of this tape when you go, and I know you've already looked at it. Man, a couple of the catches, like you get the quick sideline hitches and he gives him the shake. Once he gets that first defender gun and you watch him as he turns it upfield, he turns it upfield. Yeah. Fast. Yeah. And it isn't, you know, it's 4 to 1, but it's acceleration. Right. He right. gets right to it. Right. And I just think that that aspect of things where he showed the medium to short range mm -hmm. ability to, you know, the yak. I think he had like seven and a half yards after catch. That's elite college yak. And that's night and day from where he was the previous season. So he displayed a more well-rounded skill set. We know that he's an athlete. The explosiveness there. You saw how like a, a Zay Flowers was used? Yeah. If you could use him like that, I think it's there. That's interesting. Yeah, the ability to win in multiple ways is is nice. I mean, that's that's something even in the NFL. Like we saw that with Stefan Diggs, he got used deep, he got used shallow. And it's like, huh, maybe he can do everything. You know, DJ Moore had a similar thing where you're like, this guy can win. However, you ask him to win. That's that's kind of how superstars. Your are original DJ Moore, Stan. Yeah, love DJ Moore since since he came in. Yep. Amen. Um, but yeah, Xavier Worthy. I, that's I mean, but he did he show the deep stuff as much? I mean, it sounds like that kind of didn't work. You know? it, it, in terms of converting it, yeah. I mean, there's there's some drops. I mean, okay. that's one of the familiar refrains on him is hey, he's he's got some shaky hands every once in a while. Mm -hmm. And I want to say like his drop rate, uh, his drop rate two years ago was ten and a half percent. That dropped to six and a half percent last year. It's a noticeable yeah. increase, and six and a half percent—that's a pretty damn good drop rate. Yeah. Anything, you know, if you're in single digits, it's okay. The closer, you know, the further down you go, but like six point six, six and a half percent—I'll I'll take that all day. One of the things, if I was going to kind of pick his profile apart a little bit, the weight is where you start. But mm -hmm. the thing that would next concern me is this guy peaked as a freshman. He eventually his he drops down, I think with like 23% dominator rating, which is fine. But AD Mitchell comes up ahead of him. And you know, the way you're describing his role in the offense, it's like some of the more traditional wide receiver stuff is now maybe like AD's the number one kind of NFL style receiver, as worthy is used on some of the more manufactured stuff. I'm a little nervous about who ad mitchell is like is he i mean and this is i would like to get your your take on on him because he had such a strong combine but yards per route run wasn't great he took a while to come on he's a first he's a, a three-year early declare guy there's some things to really like about ad mitchell but he does strike me as a bit boom bust and so yep. it's like in the in the worlds where mitchell's not that good what does it say that Worthy was kind of passed by him in his final season when they're both the same year in the program? I feel like, I mean, passing, I don't, I don't know if I if I would be comfortable okay. saying okay. passing him in the offense because Worthy did outproduce him. Um, but, you know, the thing is with, with AD, he took on the role that Worthy had the previous season. Right, right. He became the true X. And the the guy downfield because his a dot I think it's 16, 16 16.3 average depth of targets the second highest in the draft class you know for this year but he only averaged one point eight yards per route you're under two yards per route in college that's a problem yeah that's not good if you want to be an elite wide receiver yeah. and the other thing is he's not a he's brick tackles hmm. 
to the break tackles. Now the career, uh, it's really 9.7% career broke, broken tackle rate. Okay. And if you're going to be 205, you know, uh, six, three, you're a deep threat specialist. Uh, he got three targets all season at or behind the line of scrimmage. So they're not giving him manufactured touches. Right. They're not trusting him for that sort of thing. Um, 27% of his balls were deep throws. So I just look at him and I think he's smooth. He's athletic. He's fast. Um, but it's the craftiness thing. I don't see route manipulation in the way that you do from some of the more advanced guys okay. here. He doesn't set his stuff up. Like he's look, he'll throw some things, he'll, he'll throw some shakes out and some some fakes in the route. But I feel like I'm watching him and he's counting steps. Like it's that's kind of what okay. I feel. I don't feel like it's fluid to him yet. I think some of that has to do with when he was at Georgia. Uh, his first year, he did. He was really good as a freshman, but he didn't get hardly any opportunities hmm. because he was coming back. There was like some health thing. I'm not even sure what it was. Like it was some thing. He just they were managing his reps, and then year two he comes out and he's you know he's coming up. He's doing better and what have you, and he's getting more. But he wasn't ever. I don't think he ever felt like he was going to be the guy at Georgia, which is too bad because Carson Beck came in and took right over, and I love him. 2025 love him so he goes over to texas and then he just took over the the worthy thing yeah where's the full route tree out of him too so that's kind of what concerns me about ad is you see the flashes but i haven't seen him put it all together it sounds like a little george pickensy to me i could see that yeah okay without maybe the angry blocking right right he also i mean he does mitchell looks very he looks very smooth and fluid with He's the ball fluid. in his hands. Yeah, I can you see know? that. Yeah. He like runs with the ball. I'm like, that's reminds me of like CD Lamb a little bit. Like though just like the physical movement, you know. Yeah, but yeah, sure. his profile is not CD Lamb's profile. No, it's yeah. not 3.4 yard, yards after catch. Man, yeah, you gotta have a little more than that. Yeah. Um, you're used you'd like to see it, but you know, with, with the big receivers, you know, and this is something that I I, I feel like the last year's class kind of has dragged me to this a little bit. And, you know, I'm a taller guy, so I, I like my big receivers. Look at last year's class and all the shorter guys, twitchy, mm. fast, crafty, and they're getting open. Yeah. I mean, all of them. Dell, JSN, you'll, you'll be fine. Zay, Addison, um, uh, there's one more, Downs. Just off right, the top down, of my no, head. Downs. Downs, all of them are pretty damn pretty good. good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Downs was fine, and he had, yeah. he had and he you was know, the, the mustache man throw. Tell, like the more the guy we were most concerned about the, the size with, I would say. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they all, I mean, they all checked in with yeah. pretty damn good rookie season. So that ability to separate, just that that ability that was there in college for these these smaller guys who were crafty, quick, lighter, they're able to translate that. Mm -hmm. Can these big guys do it? I I there's gonna be there's gonna be busts. Where are you on, big on Keon Coleman? Because he's the the least of the separators, and he's sure. right, and he's a pretty big guy, but basketball player, athletic. But then he runs four six one. But yeah. he's still you know he jumps and he runs out. twenty in the gauntlet, and it runs the fastest gauntlet, and right. he hums through, and he's bang 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 does it all. Yeah, so kind of perplexing there. But he's I mean I think most people agree he doesn't separate well. Yeah. So agree. Does yeah. he have the kind of can he bully NFL defenders, basically? His path to success is Drake London. Yeah, yeah. Because Drake London, if you watch, I know you watched him at USC. A lot of the time, you know, if if you had a you know a DB seven yards off him, he would just, okay, ball snapped, turn, give it to me, and, okay, tackle me. Mm -hmm. Come on. Good luck. And then he's taking them, and he's smashing their faces in the ground, and he's going for 10 yards. And there's not a lot that could be done. Right. And that's the path to winning because he's 6'4", he's 215. He returns kicks. How many guys are 6'4", 215 return kicks and, and do it pretty well? Not many. Cordell Patterson. Cordell Patterson, <laughs> who is, I mean, one of a kind. Yeah. One of one, yeah. you know? But also had to convert to running back. <laughs> had to convert to running back. Isn't running a route tree. <laughs> no. You know? Yeah. Like you're manufacturing it all. Yeah. Him, yeah. But but he's unbelievable. Right. So right. the thing is with, with Coleman is I, I – that's my path 
And I do think it's possible. Like I okay. like Keon Coleman. In fact, um, you know, fun fact, I had more Keon Coleman shares than any human being on the planet in a CFF C2C <laughs> context last year. I'm serious. I put it out there and nobody else said they had more shares. I had nine <laughs> shares in 22 leagues. So if you had more than nine, okay, you beat me. But I love but he wants Coleman. to see it. He's not taking I want to see it. No, yeah. trust but verify. Yeah. Yeah. But with uh with Keon Coleman, um, the athleticism is there just because he didn't run that, you know, he wasn't fast in that straight line. His play speed is fast. Is he a crafty separator? No. But do I think that he can do enough? It's gonna be tough to jam him. Mm-hmm. I think he can do enough at the line where he can get off it. I think he can at least use his physical gifts to bully ball it and shield the defender with his body and to be able to make the, you know, the body control he has on those catches. I, I think there's a path, but it, it's a lot tougher at four, six, one, you know, but it, it's going to have to be, it, you have to be a bully. You got to get some, you got to get angry. Yeah. Cause he was really nice at, um, you know, Connor and I, we interviewed him at, at uh, the combine. Very nice. Really good kid. Like really good attitude. I, I need to see a little more piss and vinegar out of him. <laughs> He's too nice to you. This too time. nice. <laughs> too nice. I want I want Froton on the basketball court, right? I want I want protecting but the rim. You know, some guys are nice, and then you put them on the, the field or the court, yeah. and they and they change. So well, I like them. I mean, that's a good thing. It's just, you know, I want I want the mean spiritedness. I don't want him to make friends out there. I, I want him to be angry. I want him to be physical, yeah. and that's the only way he's going to win. He's not going to do it by being smooth and fluid like some of these other guys or, or the, the clean breaks. Yeah. He seems very binary. Like either he's mm-hmm. going to be able to do it or it's like a Terrace Marshall or it's off. Yeah. Fast. Yeah. Yeah. I, was, oh, I felt bad about Terrace Marshall. Oh, it could have been it's maybe, maybe some other world, but not good enough. Yeah. And it's a similar thing. Like he was, you know, that's kind of, he's a deep threat kind of going to go up bully. Same dudes, size. And it doesn't, yeah, it just doesn't quite work. And then it doesn't work at all. If it doesn't work, all. yeah. And you're um, not seeing the field. If it is, you're not seeing the field. Exactly. It either works or you're not on the field. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's he. He makes me nervous, but at the same time, I would. I am trying to mix him in some because it might work. It might work. Uh, and so some. You still see him going in, in the end of the first too. With you do sometimes Jeremiah Zerline, yeah. like these guys yeah. who are very plugged in. I people. thought he might fall more consistently after the four six one, but it doesn't seem like that's moving because he's still a ninety third percentile athlete in terms of reps. His other uh-huh. stuff's pretty damn good. Yeah, his other stuff was good. Like there's a path, and he's big, and he's big. Yeah, yeah. Well, some of the other smaller guys, like you, you mentioned, Lad, um, and the athleticism there makes him because I, I am concerned about his lack of production. But his, you know, the, the banged up this year too. Keep yeah, that in mind. Yeah. And it's Georgia. Yeah, right. like it's right. They're mauling half the teams they're playing right. to the point where it's like, all right, let's dial it down. You saw also with T. Higgins coming in, where his his yards per route run told the the more accurate story, which was off the charts. But then it's you know compared to his his production or his his share of team production was it's like yeah they so they were like prime Clemson were pulling team. him from yeah the game. prime Clemson <laughs> yeah yeah height of their powers right he didn't need to be out there. Um, so I am open to that argument for sure. But what the, some of the other, I mean, there are, this is a deep wide receiver class period. So there's other yeah. big guys there's other small guys, but who jumps out from the other small guys in the class? And there's several that are looking like they might have pretty good draft capital. Sure. Roman Wilson, Ricky Pearsall, um, Malachi Corley's in the conversation for round two. I think there's lots mm-hmm. of guys of the, of that smaller twitchier group. Do you have any favorites? I like Pearsall a lot. Uh, definitely Roman Wilson. We already talked about that. I, I, those three guys. Uh, absolutely, I, I don't have many questions about them. Especially like Pearsall is really a he's a sight to behold. I my comfort. It's it's weird with his ability to catch the ball. He, he's his ability to contort. Like the ball hits his hands and it sticks. It doesn't matter how awkward it looks because he's got to you know adjust because Graham Mertz is throwing him the ball. He's getting it. He reminds me of the way he catches the ball. And this is what, I mean, it's high praise. Reminds me of Chris Carter. Wow. I mean, that's as good as it gets. His hands are unreal. And he did it in the spring. Just watch him. Watch him. He was a big 
kind of quietly because Roman Wilson, I think, kind of came out of the senior bowl with like the most buzz. But Pearsall also had a really strong senior bowl, right? Really strong senior bowl. Really strong season. And the thing is with him, he maybe didn't get as much senior bowl, you know, pop love as he will kind of out of the combine. Because you're looking at him, you're like, is he going to be able to run? Okay, is, is he like a 4-5 guy maybe? And he runs a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, okay, check in the athleticism boxes that you have kind of concerns about. Mm-hmm. Nope. I mean, it's all there. So you throw in his his body control, his hands, craftiness, toughness over the middle too. Throw that all in. And the fact that he just – he disguises his intentions real well too. Like it's – all that stuff, I, I feel like it's there. And Roman Wilson as well. He's a, he's a better athlete, Roman Wilson. I mean, yeah. No offense to Ricky Pearsall, but Pearsall's bigger. You know, he weighed his, he's 6'1, 190. He's not small. Yeah. So I I, I want to say small, but I kind of feel like he's viewed yeah. as being like a slot I only think he is like this. A, a small, undersized slot guy. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I get it, but he's not small, small. Yeah. You know, like he may be a little thin, but. Wilson is a little more traditional in that sense. And Roman Wilson's a guy who in 2022, you know, he uh he was like getting four or five targets a game. But I was pounding him on the prop bets because he caught them all. He would catch everything thrown his way. And he's converting it. And it's like he's they don't throw much, but when they do, they're throwing it to Roman Wilson. And it was kind of like Cornelius Johnson had a little more of you know respect or sort of a thing up yeah. until that point. But I started watching Roman two years ago. Like, man, this kid's good. He's just clean. He's just, he's beating this guy every route. And it just expanded a little bit this year, where even though he only had 700 yards because it's Michigan, he had 13 touchdowns. Yeah. And he would have had more. He just didn't have the opportunity. So he goes to the senior bowl at the end of the first practice. He gets called out as, you know, the, uh, they have the call out at the very, very end with the best wide receiver in the practice and the best cornerback. And he matched up against uh, you know, Kenyon Mitchell yeah. for Toledo, yeah. who's who's real, real. He could dude. be the first cornerback taken. Right? Could, very well, could be. Yeah, I think it'll be Terry on Arnold personally. But he's, but he's the there. Conversation. Oh, yeah. he's there. Yeah. He'll probably be the second one take. Yeah, I don't think Wiggins can do it. He's too too light. Um, but yeah, I mean he he went out there and got called out, and he caught he, he toasted Mitchell, caught a beautiful pass in the back end of the end zone, and it was just like, all right, I'm done here. <laughs> Give me Roman Wilson. I think he's a, he's a solid early second rounder, mid second rounder. I don't think he can fall out of it. He's just too dynamic. Oh, yeah. Incredible athlete too. Yeah, incredible athlete. I get it all. It all adds up for me. And he catches it, contested targets. I mean everything. Yeah, I think as we're sitting like right here in this part of the you know the pre draft period, it's like I don't I don't want to get too precise about like this guy's going to go late first and this guy's going to go mid second like. Roman Wilson, Lad McConkey are not falling out of the second round. Yes. Correct. They're going in the second round. Yes. And so yes. if they go in the late first, that's like a nice little bonus. But I don't, it's like who who kind of cares? Like we can we can lock them in for second round draft capital and they look very appealing. Yeah. I can only imagine where they're going in best ball drafts. Like where, where are those two? So Lad goes more, I think, like in the 120s. Okay. Um and Pearsall's at a big discount, I would think. Yeah, you can get. I think he's still in the early two hundreds. We we've had we've been. Okay. Let me pull it up because we've had we've been way ahead on Pearsall the whole way. Great job on that. Um, well, I mean, it's just like everyone I listen to just doing college football is like this guy's. It's this guy is kind of does the dirty work, but is is yeah. legit talented, and then was always projected to go in the second round range. And that's obviously only been strengthened by the fact that he's uh, that he is actually really athletic. So yeah, Ricky. Oh no, so he's up to one seventy three. So credit, okay, credit. To yeah, um, Lad is one twenty six, and then Rome's jumped up significantly. I would think um, Roman Wilson's up to one fifty. Well, one fifty. Okay, yeah. so he's yeah, he's pretty comfortable. That's interesting. There's twenty five pick spread between Wilson and Lad. I get it. I get it. But you know, but the Pearsall. The, I don't know if that's three, you know, two, three rounds. I've been enjoying this discount on McConkie. Yeah. And although I need more McConkie because I didn't realize he was this athletic and kind of locks nope, in with the draft. I mean, nobody realized he was this athletic. Yeah. Four, three, nine. Yeah. 
and I mean, you know, he could. I mean, if he lands with like the Chiefs, or I mean, obviously, oh, like someone's landing with the Chiefs, right? That's what do. we're hoping. We, yeah, Bills and the Chiefs. You yeah. know, it's like yeah. okay, how can we get the guys who yeah. are going there? And the Bills aren't going to pick up a, a slot. Yeah, because they got Khalil Shakir looked great down the stretch. So you know, they're going to want a fucking Gabe Davis. Oh, whoops, the Gabe Davis uh, <laughs> replacement. Yeah, I mean, it, well, Sorry, Brian Thomas was probably no. You can curse on her. Brian Thomas was probably the. Uh, the guy they were eyeing, but he's going to be long gone. Why wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure they were eyeing him. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dude, what a what a what crazy. a show he put on! Crazy four three three. You at two oh nine? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And I'm, he was. I mean, he was lethal downfield. Yeah. I mean, neighbors and and Thomas on the outside for Jaden Daniels throw. That's another thing that kind of look at Jaden like. Does it get any better for your bookends that you're throwing to? I know. Just pick one. He, it's a little, um, uh, he's much, he's like it coming in. I'm like, kind of his profile feels like big Jalen Waddle, you know. So, is that does that check out? Ooh, I would love that. I love Waddle, so yeah, I'm I love a Waddle. big Waddle guy. So, uh, I, I that would be amazing, wouldn't it? It would, I hope so. <laughs> Very nice. Um, all right, let's there's a couple. So, I did a four hour podcast with Eric Vine for, and we didn't talk about uh, like two people, one of them was Javon Baker. And he's, he's a guy that I have had. So there's two guys in the rankings right now that I find myself taking a bunch. Jermaine Burton, who's at 213. Jermaine Burton, nice. He's a, he's a 213. He's a 213. He had another good – I mean, he's another guy he, who's great fast, combat. incredible pedigree. You know, yep. George at Alabama. What do you want? He had, a, he, he had over a 30 – I think it was a 30% dominant rating at Alabama. That seems good to me. That'll check the box. Yeah, check Hell the yes. box, dude. No, yep. no problem with Jermaine Burton. Uh, the speed's there. He's not big. You're right. Five right. eleven, five right. ten. You know what I mean? But uh, he's shown the ability to win, certainly deep. Right. Um, but he's like he's got craftiness to him. Like he looked good at the Senior Bowl too, in terms of his his overall route running acumen. I, I felt like he was a guy who was a pretty nice riser. I felt better about him. I was a little nervous about him going in. Simply because, I mean, I get the dominant ring. You get Jalen Miller throwing to you, you know, year one. He's he's figuring some stuff out. Uh, he was fine. He's good. But, you know, he, he could have got – it wasn't like he was having Bryce throwing him. Right. It wasn't. It was, right. it was breaking in a new QB, and uh, he was pretty damn good. But I didn't think – I didn't know. I, I, I hadn't – I still needed to see it. I hadn't seen him in person do it. And I really felt better about it after seeing him at the Senior Bowl. So okay. I, I'm in. Oh, on nice. Him. Right. Nice. Uh, I feel real good about Burton. Baker's going at 203. I was gonna say he's probably he's going that late. Yeah. He's been pretty. He's been pretty um, trendy. I would he say. seems like he's just that guy. It's such a deep class that like inevitably there's going to be a guy who just like goes at pick 60 who like people just never mustered any enthusiasm for. And I yeah. and these two were probably at this point the strongest candidates because Pearsall Pearsall was that guy for a while. Like he was going in the two hundreds in these drafts for a long time. Um, he's he's moved up. Um, Tez Walker is kind of maybe in that mix where he he goes a little higher than this, but um, is another guy that could, could just kind of go at pick sixty, pick fifty, and people never really got that excited about one. He's going at one eighty two in these drafts, so uh, I'll throw his name out there as well. But Baker. I'm even like, I don't know. Baker seems like a good prospect, but it's hard to like, like Tez Walker. I'm like, this dude is fast. fast yeah. He's going to, you know, be someone who gets open deep, hopefully. Like if it works, that's how he, that's how he wins. Jermaine Burton, same thing. I know he can do it deep. What, what is Javon Baker's like calling card at the NFL level? If he, if he has one. Well, you know, what's interesting about his target distribution is, he was pretty damn good in that intermediate range. Okay. You know, so he was pretty good at running off. He's fast, fast enough. You know, he's big. So it's, that's not how he wins, but he does a good job of running off the corners and kind of, you know, doubling back, uh, you know, snapping off the route and getting them to go with him. Okay. He's good at getting them to think like, oh, okay, he is going, mm -hmm. you know, give him a little and, and then snap and bring it back. 41% of his targets this year were in the 10 to 20 yard range. So okay. that was because they had another guy on the other side, Kobe Hudson, who was a real burner burner type. You can't remember with Javon Baker. He only had 82 targets. He put up 1137 yards on 82 targets. It's extremely rare. Extremely rare. For, for instance, last year, Mims 
cleared a thousand on seventy eight, and that's as low as I've seen in the last five years. Uh, so it's is, called, this, is this yards after catch we're talking here? That, how's he? No, 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 no. no. I, I mean, just where he's catching the ball between the no, ten no, and twenty I, yard mark. But I'm right. saying, like, how is he generating that high of a yards per target? Is it is a is he a yards after catch star? Good yards after catch, but deep too. Okay. When he when he's okay. beating you deep, he's beating you deep. Okay, he's beating you long. But he just, I, I think it. A lot of it has to do with he just wasn't doing a lot of short stuff. It was deep or it was middle. Okay. And like, why would you manufacture, you know, why are you going to give him a wide receiver screen when you got Kobe Hudson on the other side who has a more Mm -hmm. um, acceleration based sort of a skill set? You know, you can hit him with a quick slant and have him dart up the field. It's not really Baker's game. Okay. Um, But I mean, tall has a bit of meanness to him. I like that. Did you mean him at the combine? Uh, I, I, he has a little meanness to him. <laughs> so, uh, okay. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, and even though he didn't tape up, you know, do great on the track, uh, 21 miles an hour, he was gunned at at the senior bowl. Right. So that's play speed that I yeah. like. I love yeah, the play no, that, speed. That's the uh, Romeo Dobbs kind of had that. Romeo he, Dobbs. He, he didn't. Yeah. Uh, didn't test super well, but it was the the senior bowl stuff. High speed, yeah, yeah. and that stuff yeah. matters. So I, I I think Puka also had pretty good senior. Oh, he was. I want to say like his in game athleticism score, which yeah. is you know PFF just released that, and he, he was like yeah, it was ninety nine percentile, yeah. and they said report too, yeah, yeah, and that makes yeah. all the sense in the world. It was nice of them to tell us after he had the best release. Yeah. Thanks, PFF. Hey guys, we have this metric. <laughs> yeah. We and the these two time. guys who were the guys <laughs> yeah. from this class, you know, Laporta. Yeah, no, no, and, yeah. and we knew, we just knew, it. <laughs> we knew it. It's a fucking Max Chadwick, bro. Where are you, buddy? Max, I thought we were friends. You know, <laughs> you tell me these things. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So I, um, in terms of like, let's see what that landing spot is. Mm-hmm. Like, if there's opportunity, well, okay. You know, let's let's keep that on the radar. Um, but when it comes, and so in terms of Walker or Baker. Team Baker. I don't like Devontae Walker. Okay. Uh, interviewed him at the Senior Bowl. Stood eye to eye. Uh, if I was on a basketball court with him, I'm taking him down low. I'm going at him. I'm getting right into his kitchen, and I'm coming for him. I'm not going to go around him. My body is going to be on his. He's going to get some Froton shoulders, and I'm, I'm going to get to the rack. So it's not ideal because he's not a yards after catch guy. So you're saying you can – Froton can – can, I can exert my Michael will upon him in the, on the block. Is is Which what is I not do. ideal in my forties. Uh, I could do that. That being said, <laughs> Devontae Walker, man, I, I was at um, UNC. You love having me on. <laughs> I do, I do. I, I feel. I just was thinking. I think Tez Walker would probably push back on this, but <laughs> I mean, this isn't like this didn't happen. Like, man, that guy interviewing. <laughs> that being said, you can see the footage yeah. of me interviewing him, and I'm, you can see how I'm, I'm bigger. Tez Walker, right. but you weren't, dude. I'm not afraid. Of Tess you didn't Walker. get a basketball. If you think I'm afraid of him, I'm not. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> You're loving this. Anyways, <laughs> that being said, right? So Tez, the thing with him, I got <laughs> great. Uh, I was at UNC Clemson, and he matched up against Wiggins. Nate Wiggins, who ran a four two nine, a four two eight. And we'll probably be in the first round, despite being 165 pounds. He's going to have to tackle somebody on that outside in the NFL. Have fun with that. Yeah. But um, with that game, it was the classic Devontae Walker game. Because early on, I interviewed him about it. He took Wiggins down the right sideline, and he took him to the woodshed. He caught like a good 50-yarder on him where, uh, you know, quick little snap release and then outside – Snap, outside release. Wiggins kind of opened up, and he saw him, you know, in, in Tez's verbiage, open the gate. As soon as he, he opened up, he just shot, and he, he got him. He stacked him, got it. Nice ball tracking downfield, brings it in, puts him on the one-yard line, and they score, they punch it in. Like it, was, it was perfect. And I'm like, okay, well, here's Tez Walker. Every other pass I saw him get for the rest of the game, anything that was within 20 yards of the line of scrimmage, Wiggins ate his lunch, dominated him. His breaks, I mean, he's telegraphing them. Mm-hmm. There isn't the route manipulation that you need to see where he's not setting guys up like these upper echelon wide receivers. 
That's why you see what was he at 182, or I want to say something like that, or in the 180s. Right, yeah. I, I'm a fade on that. I just don't think he's ready to play right now. I don't think he has that skill set where he's going to be able to do that at the NFL level. The one thing I've heard in terms of like his the route running this past year was like because he transferred to UNC, the transfer got held up. He wasn't sure, you know, he was even going to be able to play. He gets on the field like halfway through the season at Kent State. I've heard the route running was better. I don't, you know, I don't assess this on film myself, but I've heard that people prefer that. You know, if you go back and look, you're like, oh, there's more here. Do you feel that way at all? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, great. It looks great against Matt Corners. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, that's okay. true. But, you know. Here's what I'm concerned about. Broke two tackles all season. That's two. That's He's a light. huge red He's flag light. of his He's game. not crafty. He's not yeah. physical. Yeah. He... <clears throat> You can track the ball though, like a mofo. Yeah. Great ball one, tracking. One dimensional deep threat kind of guy, right? Real good ball tracking. And you know, he's, he's got good hands, you know. So I I I there is, I think, a path, but for the purpose of what we're doing here, I don't think there's a first year path. Okay. I still think he's developed enough to do that. Maybe, maybe year three down the line, you know, he, he gets his feet under him, but there's a lot of work to do. He's only had a half a season at the power five level. He's at the Mac. He's against the Mac is the lowest level of FBS football comfortably at this point. The right. Sun Belt is eating its lunch. Hmm. He's there at the Mac. Okay, you get six games against the Power Five. He broke two tackles. Not good enough. Fair enough. Um, all right, we only have a couple minutes. We have like literally one minute, but I want to ask you about Brock Bowers before we sign. We didn't talk to running back at all. It's a pretty weak running back class, so that's fine. But Brock <sighs> Bowers I hate that refrain. <laughs> Do you? These guys are going to eat. You're going to have guys who get time. I got three running backs. All right, on. go ahead. I'll keep it quick. I know you want me to. Jalen Wright, Tennessee. Smoke show. Four, awesome. Three, eight. Awesome. Four, combine. three, eight. Hits bombs. He was the number two running back last year behind Jabari Small, who was basically just a short yard specialist. And I was losing my mind in the offseason. Wright had like season. a big injury, didn't he? Am I wrong about this? Early in his career? Uh, early. Early in his career. Okay. But he's been fine the last Okay. Season. Okay. Um, but it was Jabari Small, who was, it was like a, a, a very – limited just a just a, a plugger a two down pounder and no dynamicism and it was driving me nuts all last offseason like why isn't Jalen Wright getting more why is he the one B and then I you know I took my shares of him because I, I couldn't help it he was going for nothing in college fantasy drafts because it's it's Tennessee mm -hmm. it's a run excuse me a pass base offense you know Josh Heupel's running it we just saw it. Hendon Hooker Right, throw right. all over the place, Tillman, Hyatt, et cetera. Right, right. And then, you know, it's uh, it's Joe Milton coming in. Like, all right, we got big arm Joe Milton. All right, well, they're probably going to be throwing the ball around. Nope. They ran the ball all over the place. And Jalen Wright basically became like the engine of the offense. Because hmm. Joe Milton is so bad, so bad, that he took Josh Heupel's 40 <laughs> points a game offense. Everywhere he's ever gone, he's putting up 40 a game. And he made it a run-based three running back rotation with power run scheme? What the hell is going on? That's how bad Joe Milton is. Don't take him. We you don't want Joe Milton. Can we? You know, you no, know, you, you can't. Freshman. All right, so I like him. <laughs> I like Trey Benson. Trey Benson yeah. as well, 220. He broke. He had a, like 4.5 yards. Another really strong contact. After contact. Yeah. Big. 220? You ran a 4.39? Okay, like his his vision isn't the best. He's gonna run into a blocker too. Yeah, yeah. Man, he's 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 twitchy too. He's got a good, nice little slide step. You know, he can drop a dead leg on you. Uh, I like it, but like I, I feel like I like right a little more. Oh, interesting. Okay, because I like the way his tempo of his running. He paces himself. Tempo. You don't just get to take it and go. Mm -hmm. He'll give you a little. He's crafty. He's smart. Well, I like him. And my third one is Marshawn Lloyd okay. uh, for USC. So I think those three guys right now. And they're all. Depending on landing spots. Those are the three guys. If I'm you guys, that's who I'm going for. They're because all Jonathan right Brooks. Now. You can't do Jonathan Brooks. Of course they're risers. Because I had those three as my top three in the preseason. Jonathan so Brooks. I, I'm still interested in Jonathan Brooks because I think he comes on late season. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it, it, at his current Ooh, price, that's enough. Uh, he's in the one. I was say, he's he's, he's going to be late. I know it's best ball when you want to get that uh, one sixteen. Whoa, he's come Whoa. up a lot. 
He's come up a lot. He was in the 130s. Off an ACL in November. The money for these tournaments is weeks uh, 17, and you got to get there in single elimination week 15 and 16. So having a guy coming on late season is is massive. Yeah. Um, and everyone drafting in March knows that. Savvy. Well, yeah, this is uh, you know out of my purview, but hey, that's why I'm here. I'm learning here <laughs> from the great Pat Corain. Well, Jalen Wright is 154. So Whoa! you could be drafting a bunch of Jalen Wright in this. Benson, I'm in. I'm in. Benson's 119, so he hasn't flipped Brooks wow, yet. So he it's will, still Brooks. Yeah, it's still Brooks. I think Benson Dude, flips you guys, him we're, we're, That's a lot of opportunity cost. And then Lloyd. Because one Lloyd, of these guys is going to go to a big – he's going to get the bulk. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Lloyd's 155 too, huh? Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love my guys. What do you like about Lloyd? Because he's – I haven't Lloyd? found a ton of – I mean, he looks fine to me, but he looks, seems kind of chaotic in his running style. You know, and it, and his profiles is a little spotty. Sure. Well, I mean, look, if you're looking at him and you're saying, all right, well, let me let me look at, you know, numerically from the first his, his South Carolina run. Well, you're not going to get it's not going to look that great because that's just not what they did. Shane Beamer had a three running back rotation. And they just kind of, you know, rotate him through. Plus, he ripped a knee, uh, you know, freshman year, pre-freshman mm -hmm. year. He didn't, he didn't do anything. So, um he had to come back and do that. Same thing Trey Benson did too. He ripped a knee freshman year at Oregon. But then he comes back and he's at USC. Seven yards of carries, 17.2 yards per catch. Number one in the country in FBS in terms of yards per catch. He didn't even catch passes at South Carolina. I had no idea what he looked like coming out of the backfield until he got to USC. I don't know. I had him on C2C teams too. I've had on my first C2C since 2021. But dying for him to get out there, finally. And he put it all together. I mean, he's dynamic. He ran in the 4-4. Four, four, it was like 4-4-5, four, 4-4-6. Four, 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 I mean, for he was, yeah, he was listed at 207 yeah. in college. Yeah. Checks in at the Senior Bowl, 217. Love that. Runs a 4-4-6. Four, four, That's how you get me excited right there. Yeah, that is. You nice. show in big and you run fast. Yeah. And I already know what you can do because, God, you put on a show in terms of catching the ball at the Senior Bowl, too. I mean, all everything I saw on the field from him catching the ball, translated to the senior bowl, maybe even more. He was one of the better pass catching backs there. I mean, I'm in. He's a crappy pass blocker. Crappy. No, I, I, I'm I'm excited to hear that. I thought you were going to just say he was mean to you or something. No, but he flexes out 10% of the time. Uh, actually, I liked you. He was nice to me. Oh, Lloyd. oh, wait, but this is a red yeah. flag. Yeah, no, no, well, not with Marshawn Lloyd. <laughs> okay. Because I already have pride. Because you're already in. No, I, I'm already invested. <laughs> all right. Um, Bowers, anything to say on Bowers? Because I'm like, dude, this guy's like the best tight end prospect ever. No, 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 he's a really strong, he's really good. The, he's a really good, good. He's a good run blocker, even though he's undersized. Like, I mean, this dude's gonna be out there playing tight end. Like, the Kyle Pitts thing, I was always like a little bit, listen, I got on board eventually, but the I'm not saying I didn't get on board, I got on board, but the first hype train i was a little i i caught the second hype train on kyle pitts because i'd like the big wide receiver thing i like skepticism don't don't apologize for being conscious. well i'm just not trying to uh rewrite history that i didn't get aboard the train so i got <laughs> i did but the kyle pitts thing like the, the big wide receiver thing bugs me sometimes it's like yeah but he's not playing wide receiver and he's not going to be out there for all the routes so when is he leaving the field and Kyle Pitts leaves the field on play action snaps around the goal line? He doesn't get he doesn't get any touchdowns. Yeah. Bowers is a, at least I know he's going to run a lot of routes in the slot, but he he's more of a traditional tight end. So that makes me excited. Plus, he's such a good receiver. But you're not maybe quite as excited as me. For years, the college fantasy C2C community has been dealing with the Brock Bowers situation. And that is he's just his numbers are so good that he's such an advantage, you right. know, so right. Right. you have to respect him. Um, but it has led to, you know, we, you have to be a little discerning when it comes to Bowers, 6'3", 235. Right. Look at the prototypes. What is Kelsey? 6'5", 6'4", 6'5", 250. I mean, th that's, look at Dalton Kincaid, 6'5", 250. You know, the length, the range, you know, going outside of his frame. So that's not where he wins. He's not gonna. He's not gonna outlong somebody. He's not gonna be able to, you know, sh no. use body, shield, and all that. But he is a freak athlete, right? That's what. That's what makes him special. But like when I think of the best, like oh, is he the best, you know, prospect of all time? 
Sorry, 6'3", 235. We're talking tight end. Yeah, he's not a prototypical he's the pro tight end. That's true. So I have yes. reservations yeah, that's, that's about that. That's fair pushback. Yeah. Like, you just got to move him everywhere. That's how you do it. Yeah. You H-back him. You put him in the slot. You line him up out wide sometimes. If you can, if it's man, you can get a, a linebacker to travel with him. Get after it. Yeah. Because he is fast. I wish he tested. I wish we could have seen. Because there's rumors, hey, he might run sub five, four, five. And if he does, then we're all just like, oh, my God. Look at what we have here. Sub four, five, 235. Brock Bowers. Good God. But he's really fast to know. He's got incredible contact balance. He can catch the ball. He's savvy. Like He has all these intangible type things, but he doesn't have the prototype. That's true. Yeah. I guess part of it is like, I I can't say the best of all time. Yeah. And from my perspective, it's like, I want just enough of the prototypes that he doesn't leave the field, but then I want them to pass the ball. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Like, I don't care. Don't block. Don't block. Don't actually block. Uh Just be there in case you might need to block. Just in case. And then catch a ball. Yeah. So from my perspective, that's why I'm saying like, yeah, like the wide receiver screens, he can block the heck out of those corners or safeties. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it, it, the it, Kittle is kind of the guy you hear, like that's more in long the lines that like, do you see yeah. him as that makes that a note? lot more, a lot okay. more sense to me. Yeah. But if you, if you put him on the edge, if you expect him to block an edge and pass where he's going to get eaten alive. So that's good for fantasy because why would you ever put him in that position? Right. Yeah, don't pass. Don't. Why would you, you never ever do that for? Don't do that. It's not what you're drafting. Black no, hours. no. Get a little shove a cornerback. We like that. <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So are you? So, but like in terms of the wide receivers, like I think what's going to happen in dynasty is it's going to be like um, Rome clearly ahead uh, of Bowers at this point. I agree. Uh, Brian Thomas now may be ahead of Bowers. Would would that be pretty close? Okay. Even like tight end premium type stuff? Tight end premium, I gotta go with Brock. Okay. But you know, it's I would say individual circumstance. If yeah. Got, if yeah. you got Sam Laporta, guess what? You're gonna take Brian Thomas. I would be tempted to take Bowers ahead. Oh, if it's tight end premium, though, you're right. Yeah. A tight end premium, I'd be tempted mm-hmm. to take him even ahead of Roma Dunze. Is that crazy? I just think it might be a little much for my taste. I'd have a hard time with it. I just, I, I feel like it's so much easier to project where I think Rome is, you know, the size, Rome, the Rome's, speed, Rome's everything, ready. you know. Rome's got, he, he's proven. Yeah, right? he's proven. I'm not saying Brock isn't, but I just feel like I, I know what that is. Yeah. What is this? Right. All right. We got to get out of here. Uh, we went a little over. I apologize for that, Aww. but I appreciate the Too time. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> my new san diego friend that's right you're gonna come over and check out Appreciate the softball you coming over i gotta i gotta invite you out God. you gotta make some friends you gotta get gotta get you out here i, you know? I do yeah i played some baseball back in the day you know we i'm I, a lefty i've already get i guarantee your listeners that when we are short trying to get 10 dudes together on a thursday every night of the week that ain't easy i'll play a little outfield you will be i'll, I'll help Bill. call okay All right. i'm excited about it and I might even get some video of it. Wouldn't that be something? That's something right. for the kids, right? we, for the fans. Listen, if it's not content, I'm not interested. <laughs> All right, see you guys next time. Wait a minute.